issues mm -hmm. and uh, how that works in relationship and we knew a lot about that because we've been together 30 years and we still have passion alive in our relationship. Many couples have been together 30 years mm -hmm. but to keep the love and sexual passion 34. alive. 34. 34. <laughs> 34 years. Well we've been teaching Tantra for 30 yeah, years. Yeah, so. been teaching Tantra for 30 and, um, Diane enjoyed me using all these practices from Taoist philosophy. I studied a lot of Taoist masters. And, uh, but it got to a point where she was saying this is really good skills and everything, but where, where is the love? I'm not feeling the heart chakra. And that's, that's the <laughs> most important thing uh, for yeah. a relationship, for keeping yeah. passion alive, mm. is taking, is is really being in the heart chakra, mm -hmm. authentically. Mm -hmm. uh, erotic Tantra is fabulous, mm -hmm. but you can have many different partners with mm -hmm. Erotic Tantra and still have a fabulous experience with a new partner, mm -hmm. with a new partner, with a new partner. Mm -hmm. But to keep passion alive with the same couple, the key is the heart chakra. Oh, yeah. So I think we... So then Diane wrote this book, Sexual Secrets for, for Women, because um, a lot of the original texts are written by men and even though there's women authors, they're drawing on that information to, re -te to teach it. And so for Diane to discover what is it for women, you know, what, what is this... Because a lot of the skills, are the, for example, one example is the woman is using energy and driving it up to the crown chakra. And this makes sense physically for a man to do especially when he's young, because he's drawing energy out of the sex center so he can last longer. Yeah? But physically for a woman, that's not always the best thing. Especially if she's not very orgasmic. Even if she is. Even if she is. She's drawing energy up here all the time, creating like cerebral orgasm. But if she's drawing energy out of here, it's less likely to have genital orgasm. So mm -hmm. it's sort of like backwards for women, you know. It's not necessary always to do this, because when a woman has an orgasm, energy goes like that anyway. It shoots through all the chakras. So I'm saying that, you know, it's addressing Tantra, what is it for women? What's the difference, you know? Mm -hmm. Not just following the what it is for men, mm -hmm. but to see what it is for women. And I think that's um, uh, a field that, that um, can be explored more, you know? Yeah, I think it's very neglected with modern Tantra. Mm -hmm. Modern Tantra is very much focusing on the male thrust forward, mm. on the male energy forward. Getting and more orgasm, isn't More it? orgasm, more orgasm, more G-spot, more orgasm, anal sex, bondage sex, bondage orgasm, yeah. bondage tantra. It's still wonderful to explore, but it's male, you know. It's very masculine. Whereas I, I feel the subtle in tantra is for the feminine energy. So a lot of the practices we might teach look similar, but the way we teach it is we, we tell you with the golden glow of Aphrodite, the goddess of love and sensuality, they said she had a golden glow around her. And we're doing a practice and it might look the same, but there's this golden glow around it. It's more feminine in nature. It's more flowing. It's more feminine in nature. Yeah, and it looks that sometimes look, looks like that's not strong, because the male is like fire, you know, fire, let's do this, let's do that. But the woman is like the water. It's not more powerful. The water puts out the fire any time, and water is sustaining. So we like to, even though we've explored all these other things, and it's probably good to explore it all, but eventually to refine it down it's to something fine. that's long-lasting. You know? It's long-lasting. Yeah. yeah, and we feel it's um, very applicable to contemporary relationship and mm. modern day life. Mm. Modern day life for, mm. for couples with family or, or uh, couples being, being together in regular life. 
that they we can take the tantric tools and tantric philosophy and meld it into modern contemporary relationship. And it's about the masculine being strong enough in his masculine to explore his feminine and hooking in to his his feminine, his his goddess, his woman. Mm. To to ha to explore with the with the fire of the sexual passion, mm. but also yeah. the very the yin way, mm. and the yin is not soft. To explore the 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 feminine mm. shakti kundalini energy, mm. a man must know how to hold his ejaculation, how to hold his semen, how mm. to spread energy through his body. Mm. So it's a different way. Mm. For example, we just did this uh, workshop in Poland, hmm? and a lot of the people there had explored oh, so a lot of uh, red tantra, you know, which is, mm -hmm. you know, exploring se uh, G spot and uh, sex in couples or maybe expanded sex, so yeah, having agree. like groups, group sex situation or um, polyamory. Mm -hmm. With several partners, and um, and so maybe at a, a, a tantric festival, then they're having a so well let's have sex with this partner and this teacher and this teacher, yeah. and um, that's maybe okay to explore. But when you refine this and you want to be in a long-term relationship and keep the passion alive, there's more trust involved, and. Um, you can still play with these things in a more refined way. Like some of the most advanced tantra was what's called dalliances, which was group sexual situations in the ancient tantric books. You'll see couples in sexual positions in a group, for example, and these were highly highly conscious, developed teachers or tantricas who would use this energy. Not just to have sex with everyone, but in a higher sense for the, the betterment of the universe or, or the betterment of the couples involved. And you can try this, you know, with this so called advanced tantra, um, but always the, the consciousness of some of the people is not really there, it's ego orientated, and um, it's not really necessary because of sexual transmitted diseases as well, having sexual interaction with many people. Um, so, for example, I like to, to still play with that concept, with the group energy, because it can be powerful. Um, so in Poland, once I had the people up a certain level of consciousness, we, we, um, we do the idea of forming mandalas between a group of people. This is, uh, came out of the temples of Tibet and the Buddhist monasteries, where they would have groups in a, in a, in a mandala shape on the floor, and they would have them maybe chanting, because they could find that they found that they could transform the nervous system of, of each individual within the group breath and within the group chanting. It's called respiratory mm. resonance. Resonance, yeah, which can make a, a group energy can be more powerful for each individual there. So then we add the aspect of sexuality within that group. So generating sexual energy around the group and doing it was something came from a teacher of ours, Diraj, many years ago. He was doing healing practices again. He studied in these Buddhist monasteries and they shared with him some deep secrets about healings. Healings on the level of the bones, not just in the body, not just in the deep tissue, but going into the bones, because he believed the bones contain the deepest energies. The like deepest memories. Memories, right back to the witch hunts, you know. And that the Inquisition, here we are in Delft. Yeah. Many positions. women died many yeah. you know, hundreds of years ago. So these groups involve the pressure on the bones and involve sexual energy pulsing in the group and in a mandala form. It's very beautiful, but it's not overtly, you know, linga mignoni. Mm. But for example, we form in a group and uh, there might be the, the sole of the foot uh, on the pubic bone of the woman. Having deep pressure. Deep pressure and linked in a certain way and then pulsing the energy with the music to the heartbeat. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes more strong, you know, so that the woman lifts the hips and it's like ah, 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 
like this and so the energy will choof, 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 and it can have a, a huge effect. It, it on, goes around yeah. in a lovely uh, energetic spiral, yeah. a vortex. Yeah, so creating a similar energy to having sexual intercourse in this but in a safe way and even a more powerful way because people will let go within the boundaries, whereas the other way someone is just a bit reticent about what's happening and some are taking advantage, whereas this way people... Yeah, ego even, gets in the way. Yeah, yeah. With this way people can just go for it, you know, within the boundaries. They know there's not going to be actual intercourse, but it's very sexual and it's very powerful. So, mm -hmm. this is, I like playing with this, you know, idea. For example, I gave the people this, uh, this sheet here, which uh, has uh, mandalas, you know, different mandalas mm -hmm. here, like this and then linking the people in a mandala and making it very beautiful. It has beauty, you know. I think Tantra should have beauty. Yeah, the beauty of Aphrodite it has beauty. About desire, yeah. about love, about beauty. This is yeah. what Tantra is about. Yeah, Aphrodite is principles, yes. isn't it? Beauty, sensuality, grace. The goddesses. Of love and sensuality. Yeah. And so I really enjoy working at this level for all, you know, we've been doing, as I said, for many years workshops to, to link these groups like this and have this opportunity because there's two people can't do this, but in a workshop situation... Two, make, two people make three. Yeah. <laughs> three ma people make four. Yeah. Five people make eight. Yeah. Eight people make ten yeah. and so on. The energy. Okay. But again, as I said, this is... Um, this has a golden glow of Aphrodite about it. There's beauty, there's sexuality, there's grace, which can still create very powerful energies. Mm. And, uh, you know, this is exciting work to do with groups. But between ourselves, I mean, we're, in the end, we're the most important. She's, this, my beloved is the most important, not the workshop. And uh, how to keep that passion alive, you know, is... Um, through practices that we do, through practices we wrote in the book, you may have read when their book was published in Poland as well as Spain and Germany, and skills that we found over these years keep the us Taoist. together, and the Taoist practices. The Taoist practices? Yeah. Many, keep us together. Well, 34 years ago, Kerry studied in Japan, mm. went to a Taoist monastery in mm. Japan, mm. and learned mm. many uh, uh, practices mm. for circulating energy in the body from the Japanese point of view. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was a, a Hatha yoga teacher mm -hmm. with the Indian tradition of uh, Swami Satchananda. Mm -hmm. So both of us were yoga teachers. Mm -hmm. So we came from that. Yeah, we yeah. came from that background. And spiritual. I think that's a very important thing. It's a spiritual background. Yeah, adding the sacred to the sexual. Yes, so we added the yeah. sexual to the sacred. Yeah, that's right. Well, sacred first and added the sexual to the sacred. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Okay. So I think the secret's there, you know, like one secret we share in the book for a long term relationship is to keep sex happening. To be saying yes to sex. It's easy in the beginning of a relationship to say yes to sex all the time, mostly. Anyway, and they have sex everywhere. But uh, through the years, things come, children, work, you know, all these things come up. Stress. Stress. Mm -hmm. and Financial stress. Finding the partners not who you may uh, thought they were. Difference in desire. <laughs> but we keep saying yes to sex. Yeah. And so sex is like the fuel of a passionate relationship. But it's sacred sex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keeping the, that alive is a, is a secret. But people think that means even if I'm tired, even if I'm not in sync with him or her, then I have to come and perform. I have to get all worked up, I have to do my breathing, I have to do foreplay, I have to get her into a certain state, I have to have her orgasm, then me orgasm, hopefully simultaneously. Uh, you know, <laughs> you're already tired, that's too hard to work. So we yeah, can add more. I guess the secret is taking some of the tantric tools and making them part of your regular sex. Yeah. That's like the that most important thing. Mm -hmm. Taking yeah. some of the tantric tools and having it with the breath. Mm. Mm. Just for five breaths. Mm. Yeah. That's all you need to do. 
like we have a practice in the book there, which is probably one practice that looks too simple, but um, it's something we find over the years that couples who we taught Tantra workshops to have, are still using because it's not complicated. And so therefore that's called daily devotion and it, it's a practice of couples coming together in a sexual position, whether they're um, turned on or not, but coming into that position, breathing with each other, just maybe ordinary mission, missionary type position, but just five minutes connecting, maybe inside, maybe outside, breathing together, and agreeing to do that, even though I don't feel like it, I'm not in the mood, I'm too tired, it's five minutes, but we find that out of that, that gives you energy, it puts you in the mood, it keeps your chakras balanced and puts you back, and we call this daily devotion. So I think couples, you know, to do this daily and practice, because when I first saw it, Dr. Stephen Chang told me Was it Taoist? Yeah, it was an old, yeah, Dr. Stephen Chang, we had him in Australia, wrote the Tao of Sexology, very brilliant person, and he showed me this and I thought, it's too simple. <laughs> he said, do it for two weeks, see me, we see me there. And then we kept that practice going through our lives, you know. And uh, it doesn't matter if there's differences, desire or not, you come together, it builds desire and builds compassion. And uh, there are many ways, like, many secrets it's, of a healthy relationship. It's, it's easy to do Tantra when you're young yeah, yeah. and you're together for six yeah, months yeah. or a year or two years. It's harder at seven years. Yeah. With you, two have, kids you have and one child job. at seven years or two year, or two children at seven years or ten years, it's harder because you yeah. think, oh, <laughs> you haven't helped me with the baby. Oh, I'm tired. Look. And he thinks, oh, she won't have sex with me. She yeah. wants the children. She's in love with the children. This is much more difficult. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, <laughs> to keep love and sexual passion alive, you, you need to study, you know, you need to be educated. And that's why I think the study of Tantra and, you know... It's very important. Yeah. And more Tantra is coming into yeah, the mainstream more, more, more. because there's more Tantra teachers. Mm. More people studying Tantra, mm. more Tantra teachers. Mm. And for instance, in Australia, mm. I have a teacher training course mm. that's called the Love Works Training. Mm. And people like who are yoga teachers, sex therapists, uh, hypnotherapists, Reiki counselors. masters, counselors will come and do the course because they want to learn some Tantra skills to teach mm, to their mm, mm. Uh, clients. And I think this is wonderful, mm. because Tantra is now, from the Tantra teachers, a certain level of interaction, and mm. then the next level, mm. and next level. Mm. Mm -hmm. So more and more people have some Tantra tools. Mm. Instead of thinking, oh, I don't like you anymore, mm. You're not good enough. You don't bring mm. home the petrol. Mm. You don't help with the kids. Mm. You're too hard. Mm. The people like that will then split, finish. Mm. So it's 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 good to have some tantra skills mm. to think. Oh, we'll have more mm. heart connect. Mm. We'll have more sexual mm. connect. Have more connect. Mm. And I think like what Tara is doing within the university. It's oh, fantastic. So good. You know, and I, I was quoting, quoting her in Australia all the time Excellent. to my teachers, our practitioners. But, you know, she set this up within a university Wonderful. situation where that person can get qualified and get different aspects of the Tantra and bring it into the mainstream, not just the Tantrikas, but bring it to the world. And because the world, you know, oh. there's, there's so much like. That to bring it in that way, if they can get some qualification, the doctors will send them clients, you know, because they say, oh, well, I've studied, I've got a degree, I've got a, a qualification. And I think then they, they can get it out to the world, even on a kind of basic level to start with, that we can really make a difference in the bigger world. So I think what she's doing is just fantastic and you know all my uh, love and support to her and what she's doing and I think it's just amazing that she's forefront of this you know bringing it into the world you know to to, to, yeah, to, yeah, to, to have it recognized as a profession yeah, that's right I think it's really right. important instead of a fringe yeah. 
Yeah. And now, when we started, we were on the fringe. Yeah, that's and right. now people like Tara, yeah. is young and got the energy, is bringing mm. it mm. into the professional world. Yeah, good on her. And yeah. Very good. Yeah. And it's, it's good to meet you yeah. as students yeah. for her uni in her yeah. university yeah. Uh, department. Yeah. So, do you think uh, Tantra may... Uh, bring good change uh, for the society, yes. for the world? Was, this, is, uh, this is the way it will. Because Tantra itself, the viewpoint from the ordinary person, from the regular person, is its cult. Mm. It's sex. Mm. Mm. It's, it's too far out. But people like Tara bringing in to the mainstream, it will make much more deeper effect, more mm. sustained effect. So the excitement of doing many Tantra workshops, many people won't do. Mm. But the basic Tantra skills that were there thousands mm. of years ago that can mm. be applied to contemporary relationships are the ones that will last. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the, like Stephen Chan, would say. Yes, There's Stephen. How many you, you yeah, yeah. How many so uh, one of our favorite teachers was uh, Dr. Stephen Chang. He was a Taoist master from China. And uh, he said, if there's harmony between a couple, if there's mm -hmm. harmony, mm -hmm. sexual harmony, harmony in the heart, mm -hmm. then there'll be harmony with the family. Mm -hmm. It's like concentric circles. And then harmony with the friends. It'll, it'll go out. Mm -hmm. And then harmony with the society. Mm -hmm. And then harmony with the culture. Mm -hmm. And then world harmony. Mm -hmm. So we are making love for world harmony. Yeah, it's a prayer and for world harmony. It's a prayer. <laughs> it's a prayer. And if we want world peace yeah. and world harmony, if we know ourselves mm -hmm. and we can get along with the partner, then it's much easier to get along with the other. Mm -hmm. And it, so I think it's yeah, very important. Definitely. And I, I, yeah, I, I think people, we meet a lot of people all over the world mm -hmm. and we're very excited mm -hmm. because if, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're studying Tantra or sacred sexuality, we think, yes, this is a wonderful way mm -hmm. for personal development, for raising personal consciousness, but not operating out of the uh, unconscious, yeah. but bringing our reactions up to consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then from consciousness choosing how we want to respond to the world. Mm -hmm. This is the most important thing. Most people react from reaction, not consciousness. But if we can react from consciousness and think, ah, we want to be in the wisdom heart, the heart of wisdom, and react to different people, and then society. I think as a collective around the world, we, we will make great change for a positive future for the world. In, instead of the greed that's happening in the world. Instead of the disrespect that's happening in the world, more people will be with the respect of the, you know, of, of wanting true peace in the heart. Mm -hmm. We have more peace in the heart, we have more peace outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were fortunate, I think, to uh, that David and Zosha from yes. uh, Warsaw. From Warsaw, uh, the Tantra here, Love. And the Tantra Love they teach. Um, I like what they're teaching. I'm, I'm happy that they're a committed couple to maybe 10 years together. And they're, they're, I think they're teaching from the heart, and I think uh, uh, what they're teaching right now is, is wonderful to bring all this to this part of Europe, you know, and not get caught up in the... Uh, hmm, in the free-for-all. Free-for-all, free getting yeah. around. So many teachers in America and around the world doing so many good things and so many outrageous things. And I think to bring it back down to what people can use, and I think they're doing that really well. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Namaste. 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 <laughs>